In this lecture, we're going to continue with more disaster recovery planning. And I think this is a good point to look a little more at our business impact analysis or BIA. We've talked about this one before. We analyze the impact to our business based on certain events, the disaster scenario. And what that really means is we identify which systems are critical, how critical are they, and how long is it okay for us to have them down. Which functions are we okay with being without for a while, and which can we not have down at all? And the criticality of a system is determined by the acceptable downtime. Here, as in anything else we do in cybersecurity and IT security, the acceptability might be determined by the cost of recovery, or it might be a legal requirement. If we sit down with senior management and we say, how long is it okay for this specific system to be down? Assuming it's a critical system, they're probably going to say never. We need this up 100% of the time, which we can do. But then you tell them this is going to cost you $40 million because we need to build a completely redundant remote data center. That way we get that completely redundant disaster recovery site. We get the true redundancy that senior management wants. They're probably going to say, okay, maybe we can have that system down for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or half an hour. And then we build the disaster recovery plan based on those numbers. But if we have systems that are so critical they can't have downtime at all, let's say we're a hospital. Well, then the patient records have to be up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Because if patient records are not accessible to medical staff, people might die. So in that case, maybe we do need that secondary site. Then once we have identified all the critical systems and functional activities, then we assign them to the tier system we talked about earlier. Each tier has a different acceptable downtime, and they also have a different recovery point objective. And the recovery point objective is how much data is it acceptable to lose. Meaning, if the system crashes right now, we can't recover the system, how much of the data on that system is it acceptable to lose? Let's say we have a backup system, and that does a backup of all our data once a week, and only once a week. Well, then we have accepted that we can have an entire week of data loss by configuring that policy. Now, if that system was a tier zero system, that means we have zero data loss acceptance. It is completely unacceptable for us to lose any data. That could be the patient records. So in that scenario, we would have something that backs up the data every time data changes. And we would most likely also have mirrored data in multiple locations. So whenever new patient data is entered, it is backed up and it is stored in multiple locations. I have also mentioned MTD, maximum tolerable downtime before. Now let's look at what that is. It is obviously how long can a system be down. But that is made up of two variables, RTO, recovery time objective, and WRT, work recovery time. The RTO is the amount of time it'll take us to restore the system, that is the hardware. And the WRT, that is the software. How much time is it going to take us to configure the system, operating system programs, load all the backups, and have the system back to put into production? And here are a couple of other key terms that I think you need to know. Mean time between failure, that is how long does it on average take for a certain part to fail. Let's say it is a hard drive. If we know that the mean time between failure for that specific hard drive is 3 years, well then we can calculate how many hard drives do we need to have on hand. If we have 100 disks and they on average fail every 3 years, then depending on how new they are, we could maybe assume that we would use 33 disks every year on average. Next up, we have mean time to repair. And here the keyword is mean. How long on average does it take us to repair a failed system? But it is important here. This is the average. If we go back to the MTD, maximum tolerable downtime, if we say the maximum tolerable downtime is 4 hours and the mean time to repair is 3 hours, well that's mostly fine. But it is the average. Sometimes it might take us 5 hours. And now we're outside of the MTD. So if that's the case, we need to find some way to bring the mean time to repair down so we never fall outside of the MTD. And then the last one here, Minimum Operating Requirements or MOR. That is what is the minimum possible requirements we can run this critical system on for a limited period of time. If this is a normal day-to-day -day operations, there is no disaster, then we know this system needs this much air conditioning, this much cooling, this much internet speed, this much memory. We know all that. But during a disaster, what is the exact minimum we can get away with and still function until we can fully recover? We might have a certain server that in regular operations needs 256 gigs of memory, but in a disaster scenario, maybe we can get away with 32. Well then, that is the MOR, the minimum operating requirements for memory on that system. And with that, we are done with this lecture. 
Thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one where we continue with more DRP.